Hi, I'm Pastor Suzanne. Hi, I'm Jaina, and I work in the nursery. Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm the kids ministry director. Hey, I'm Jacob. I'm the youth intern. Hey, I'm Josh. I lead the youth ministry and modern worship service. Hey, I'm Dylan. I'm the guy that everyone gets to look at when things go wrong. Hey, I'm Steve. I'm the lead pastor, and we are Cassidy. 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 We have a student. He just got a Bible for his birthday, and so he's been bringing in his Bible with the story of the week marked in it. We've raised $10,000 for the needs of our community. I'm so proud of our students because they planned and led a dinner church service this summer. I have parents bringing me in their kids' artwork talking about how much they love God, God loves them, how God's working in their lives. One of the most amazing things is we started off in one of the classrooms and we would maybe be able to fill seven or eight of the chairs and then it got too full and we moved out in the fellowship hall because we had 17 or 18. It's been really cool being a part of several small groups and watching people grow and develop into the people God wants them to be. We know that God is doing greater things. Greater things. Greater things. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Hey, welcome home to Cassidy. My name is Stephen Mitchell, and it is a joy to be here with you, to be able to celebrate all that God is doing. I just wanted to throw this out there. As Scott mentioned, as other people have mentioned, uh, I am recording the football game today so that I can watch it as God intended in the afternoon. Uh, not at 8.30 in the morning, so shh, don't tell me what's going on. Uh, but I am excited that I get to be here. I, I, I don't care what else is going on. This is the place to be, uh, especially on this day. And so it is awesome to be here with you. Uh, I am excited because uh, if you are new here, we're starting something brand new, and you are welcome here. You're welcome here anytime, but you are especially welcome because we are starting a brand new worship series today. Um, so whether you're joining us online or in person, uh, it is a joy to have you with us. We hope uh, that you will journey with us toward Jesus. Our whole idea is that we realize we're not perfect, but we know the one who is, and that's Jesus Christ. And we want to invite you on that journey with us to grow in relationship to God, to grow in relationship with one another so that we can go into the world and make a real difference on behalf of of Jesus Christ. So you're invited to be a part of that, invited to grow and go and, and learn about who we are so that together we can go make a difference. And again, this is our kickoff Sunday for this new series called Greater Things. And, and the idea behind Greater Things is we're going to talk about where we were, uh, where we are, and where we're going. The whole month of November, we're going to get to talk about this. And some of it's uh, because this gives us an opportunity for Thanksgiving to share with others all the things that have gone on at Cassidy. And for some of us, it's going to be eye-opening uh, because you didn't know all of the stuff that you got to be a part of. Uh, in a typical message on a typical Sunday, I, I this is going to spoil it for some of you. Some of you are going to be like, wait, he does that every week? Um, how great is that? I usually start with a uh, clever, pithy, fun story about myself, about how awesome or unawesome I am or my life is. Um, uh, but this week, instead of talking about me, I'm going to talk about you. It's going to be great. You guys are all like, oh, oh God, how did he find out? Right? Um, uh, this week, I'm talking about you, not in a bad way, but to celebrate some of the stuff that you have done, some of the stuff that we together have done so that we can pat ourselves on the back and, and then keep going forward. Uh, I don't know if you realize this or not, but we are part of a long legacy here at Cassidy Church. Uh, in 1884, there were 15 people that got together and said, you know what, we want to start something. And they said, we're going to start a, a class. And in Methodist language, uh, there were bands and classes. Class is really a community that is trying to grow together in relationship with God. It, truly, it's a church. There were 15 people. It was known as the Richwood class just down the road. And they started this community of faith in 1884. I don't know if you knew that or not. In 1899... 
Uh, there were 108 people that were coming to attend Cassidy, and, and they changed their name to Cassidy. So we used to be in this, we are in a Cassidy Township, but it used to be a, a happening hot hub, uh, and, and one of the things that was happening and hot was Cassidy Church. Um, and they moved out here and, and have uh, had renovations and changes in the course of time. Actually, if you're like, uh, I'd like to see what some of that look like. If you walk out through the, the sanctuary doors and take a left, there's a cabinet that's got a couple of pictures of the, the class, the, the church, uh, as it was back in the day. It's changed a little bit since then. Um, we, we tore it down and rebuilt it and moved things around and had new places. And in 2009, we, we renovated and changed this space, the sanctuary. And in 2018, uh, we built a new addition uh, so that we could house folks, uh, young, so that we could have youth and children's ministry, as well as adult ministry, and so that we could have uh, an opportunity to grow in relationship to God and others. Over the course of the past year, we've grown in numbers and done some amazing things. In 2018, when we took out the, so the addition that we built uh, cost about $2 million. And in 2018, uh, we, we, we took ownership of that um, and we started paying that back. And we've paid over $600,000 toward that. In the last year, in the last year alone, we raised, as Pastor Suzanne said, over $10,000 thousand dollars for the needs of others in our community. We've given over a hundred pairs of shoes, over a hundred coats, uh, over 500 sack lunches have been provided by Cassidy. This doesn't even, even touch all of the things we've done at Care to Learn um, to share with uh, students that uh, are on free and reduced lunches or just are struggling to provide food over the weekend. Um, we've also, and this is one of my favorite numbers, I did some math, and if you know me, you know I'm challenged in mathematics, uh, but I did some math, and we have over 2,000 hours as a church of discipleship classes that we have attended and been a part of. We have, uh, ha in our children's and youth space, we've loved on, nurtured, and encouraged your children and students through Josh and Emily and all of those volunteers. We have served over 1,000 people at Dinner Church. Dinner Church is an outward-facing opportunity for people that don't want to come into a regular building or don't want to have a lecture style. They want to be able to ask questions. Um, it, it, it provides that opportunity in, in a year. We've served over 1,000 people at Dinner Church. And this is just the tip of the iceberg of what we have done as a community of faith, because this is just what we have done communally. This doesn't even touch the things that you have done at home, the things that you have done in the community, or the things that you have done in your own family. We've had an incredible year here at Cassidy, and we have been uh, serving and growing like never before. And we baptize new people. We've seen new people come into relationship with the church and with God. We've seen people who had turned away from faith are, are returning to right relationship with God. And we have, have experienced this together. So I want you to, everybody, we're going to have a good time here. Uh, everybody stand up for a moment. And everybody's like, oh God, I shouldn't have come on this Sunday. <laughs> Look around and say, well done. Good job. All right, all right, we can have a seat. You can keep patting each other on the back. It's good, it's good. Uh, while it feels good, while it feels good to be a part of that, it's not time to sit back, put your feet up, and just feel like, oh, we have done some amazing work. All done now, right? It doesn't happen that way in the church. Jesus says, hey, we got more work to do, and this is the time that we can celebrate what God has done but then we can go forward doing greater things than even we could imagine that we will do. It's time to celebrate God and keep moving forward. Uh, actually, we're basing this whole message series off of a statement that Jesus made to, to his disciples. He was talking, uh, and this comes from the Gospel of John. He says this, Very truly I tell you, 
Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, uh, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Jesus tells us you are just getting started because Jesus is just getting started in us, in this community of faith, that we are going to be able to do and, and be greater than even Jesus. I, I Like, catch that for a moment. Can you imagine the disciples sitting around when, when Jesus said that? And they're like, okay, wait, uh, he came back from the dead, right? Yes. Uh, he raised Lazarus from the dead too, right? Yes. He uh, gave people sight. He gave people the ability to walk. He gave them their voice back. He cleansed lepers. And he's saying that we're going to do even greater things than that? I, I, I don't know about you, but that, that to me, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, maybe, maybe somebody else could do greater things and I could just cheer them on. I don't understand how he wants, what Jesus is saying is, I'm just one. I am just one, but I am going to give you, my church, the power of the Holy Spirit, and you are all going to do great things. And so together, together as the church of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit working in and through us, we are going to do greater things than we could ever imagine. The early church saw success at this, and instead of saying, okay, uh, we're having a little too much success, maybe we should back off. No, they kept pushing forward embracing what Jesus was doing so that they could change the world. And we, too, are a part of that. We started with 15 people in the middle of nowhere, Missouri. And they came on and said, we're going to do something great. And, and now look at us. Look at all that God has done in and through us. And, and, and this is just what Jesus promises. Jesus says, hey, my kingdom's going to start small but it's going to grow and, and be the largest thing ever, and everybody is going to know all about it. He says this in Matthew's gospel, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds can come and perch on its branches. The kingdom of heaven is always advancing. It started small it, with just some, some disciples and Jesus himself, and, and it grew into the, the movement of God on the earth, and it's continuing in us. The kingdom never stops advancing, never goes backwards. And I love the picture that Jesus has, and the birds were nesting in its branches. The reason I love that is because the birds aren't part of the kingdom. They're just benefiting from the kingdom. And we do the same thing as followers of Jesus. We do the same thing here. Basically, Jesus is saying, I'm blessing you to be a part of the kingdom so that you can bless others. Here at Cassidy, we take this seriously. We celebrate uh, Moms League as a group of moms that come together uh, during the school year on Tuesdays out here at Cassidy Church. If you ever come here on Tuesdays and the parking lot is jam-packed, it's because we have about 80 moms that show up to, to build relationship and grow. And, and there's an opportunity there where we could say, hey, we want to charge you rent. But we've been blessed and so we want to be a blessing. And so we say, hey, you can come and meet here for free because we believe that we built this place for you. We believe that we offer this space for you so that you can grow in relationship with one another and with God. We do the same thing for a couple of homeschool groups and, and almost anybody that wants to use the church facility. We try to make it available. Why? Because we believe we have been blessed so that we can be a blessing. With the kingdom's growth in us, in this community, comes a greater possibility for impact so that we can change the world in a more profound way, so that we can do greater things than even we could imagine. And, and so when we think about that, it, it can give us pause. How do we impact the world? How do we live into this legacy? And the first thing is for us, the first thing is this, we will continue to build and grow this community of believers. 
Why? So that we can share what Jesus is doing in and through us. So that we can love on others that are far from Jesus. So that we can be the people that God wants us to be. So that we can lift each other up. We can empower one another and faithfully follow the Holy Spirit and make a difference. And then our mission here at Cassidy is this. We will meet people where they are and together journey toward Christ. We will meet people where they are. That means they don't have to be good enough. They don't have to measure up to our expectations. They don't have to smell like we do or look like we do. They just have to want to be closer to Jesus, and they are welcome in this place so that together we can share love and grace, so that together we can look more like Jesus and we can live more like Jesus. And if you think this has been a great year, and if you think, man, we've done some great stuff, just wait, because you ain't seen nothing yet yet. God has greater things imagined for us and planned for us, and we get the opportunity to go faithfully following Jesus to make a difference. Can you imagine in 1839, those 15 people that got together and formed that Richwood class, can you imagine what they would think if they saw what God was doing through us today? That they would be like, hey, we did some cool stuff. Look at those guys go. They, we started that. What a blessing we are to them and what a legacy they have left for us. They have laid the foundation for us to love people in this place. And this is our time. For such a time as this, we have been called to make a difference in the name of Jesus Christ. And we serve a big God who has given us big blessings and has big expectations. The truth is this, if we want to do greater things, we have to give God greater access to our lives. We have to give greater access to God so that God will work in and through us. We can't do the same thing that we have always done and expect different results, right? Uh, that, that, that's the definition of insanity. Uh, instead, we have to allow God greater access to us so that we can share all that God is doing in us to the world around us. And we serve a God of abundance who blesses us and calls us into relationship so that he can send us to bless others. It was the same with our, our, our patriarch, Abraham, who was called by God in the middle of the wilderness, and God said, hey, I want you to follow me. Abraham said, okay, where are we going? And God said, I'll let you know when you get there. And there they went, faithfully following. And, and, and did he set expectations? No. And, and what did God say to Abraham? God said, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing to all nations. I'm sure there were times in Abraham's life when he was like, this doesn't look very much like a blessing. But here we are. Here we are as family so that we have been incorporated into the family of God, and this is what God is continuing to do in our lives. And, and God does bless us so that we can bless others. And this is an expectation from God, what God is inviting us into so that we can be God's people. And sometimes, sometimes we get too comfortable with, uh, I'm God's favorite person, and I'm just going to kind of stay here. But God says, that's not what I'm calling you to. I'm not calling you to be happy, happy uh, fat, as my, my dad used to say. I'm not calling you to be fat, dumb, and happy, right? I'm calling you so that we can be energetic and energized and go and take the next hill for Jesus Christ, so that we can love people and make a difference. And, and sometimes that comes at a cost. And, and it's a sacrifice that we have to open ourselves up to God and say, God, I need you to make this through me because I, I'm not so comfortable with the sacrifice you're calling me to. I'm not so comfortable with, with giving of, of the things that I have. I'm not so comfortable with giving of my life, my time, my talents, my gifts, my service, and my witness. Timothy is one of Paul's disciples. He, he was a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, and Timothy uh, was, was taught by Paul how to be a pastor. And, and Paul writes a letter to Timothy. It says this, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold 
of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight. Stay in it. Don't give up. Always be advancing. Always be working. Always be building. And then later he continues and he says this, command those, not suggest, not recommend, but command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them, once again, not a recommendation, not a suggestion, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Not take hold of something that just looks like life, but take hold of that which is truly life, that gives life, that wells up and is living water within us that gives us the ability to build God's kingdom right here and right now. A firm foundation Jesus has laid for us that we can live fully into the kingdom of Jesus Christ right here and right now. Jesus, uh, through Paul, tells Timothy, hey, I want you to continue that long heritage. Be a blessing because you have been blessed. Be a blessing to others. Be someone that faithfully follows me, but bless others in the world around you. Don't hold it in. Don't keep it to yourself. And, and we can stand there. We can be like, yeah, that's great. I will, I will faithfully follow you with everything I have. Well, almost everything I have. Well, most of what I have. Well, some of what I have. And it can be a struggle for us. How much do I have to give so that I feel the right way inside? And Jesus says, I, I gave it all. Where are you going to follow me to? Where are we being called to go? Where can we faithfully follow Jesus to? And some of us can sit back and we go, you know, that sounds great for others, but I, the way that I put it is I've never been blessed with wealth. I have never, I've never been burdened by wealth. I, I don't know what that's like. I, I know there are some people that are uh, in, in our community that are like, oh, I do. I know fully what it's like to be blessed by wealth or burdened by wealth, whichever way you want to put it. I've never been like that. And so when I hear Jesus say, I want you to give, I want you to live boldly for the kingdom, it can give me pause and it, it can give all of us pause because it sure does seem a lot easier to get through life if you have a lot of money. It seems a lot easier to get through life if you're comfortable, if you're not sacrificing any of what you have so that others might have a blessed life as well. And Jesus addresses that. Jesus gives a great picture of that. He's at the temple with his disciples, and as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. They're giving out of their excess. They've got so much money, it doesn't even matter, and they're just dropping it in, just like everybody else at the temple. He also, it says, saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. And the Bible tells us this is less than a penny, less than a penny in value. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. Can you imagine the disciples at that point? They're like, uh, Jesus, do you see what's going on? Do you see what everybody else is putting in? And, and yet you're saying her sacrifice, her gift was more than everyone else? Jesus doesn't see the gift. Jesus sees the sacrifice. Jesus doesn't care about the money. Jesus cares about your heart. And that's the whole idea behind this. It's not about equal gifts. If, if so, there are some of us that would be like, okay, that's not a problem. I can give equally to what everybody else. And there are others that would be like, I, I can't afford that. It's not about equal gifts. It's about equal sacrifice that we offer from our heart a gift that brings joy to God's heart. Not so that we can just make ourselves feel better, not so that we can have great air conditioning in this place, but so that we can do a mission and ministry right here in this space so that we can love people where they are, so that we can together journey toward Jesus. We give because we trust God more than money. 
Uh, I tell my son all the time, he, he doesn't go to a Methodist church. I know it's a scary thought, right? He doesn't go to a Methodist church, uh, but he, I encourage him to tithe to the church. Why? Does it benefit me in any way? Absolutely not. It benefits him because it changes the condition of his heart. And that's what we need to learn. We need to trust God more than money. Now, some of us are sitting here going, oh God, I didn't know I came on the money sermon day. Uh, welcome to the club. It's almost always, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, and, and, but I want to give us, uh, give us a reality check because some of us, especially if you are brand new to walking in a relationship with Jesus, that the, the money aspect of this can be terrifying. And so we have set up, uh, I, in conversations with people, have come up with the idea of this. It's called the generosity matrix, which gives us a spread of ideas on ways that you can step into relationship with God. And the first is, if you're not giving at all, if you have never given to the church, give once. Just take a step and say, you know what? I got 50 cents in my pocket. I'll put it in the plate, whatever it is. And you'll notice we're doing this after the plate has already gone. So you got to wait till next week, but give once. If you've given once, Move to the next step. Give occasionally. Every once in a while, hey, I found this dollar on the ground, or there's a penny in the parking lot. I will put it in. I, I'm serious. I, this, is, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm seeking us to do, is each of these is a step forward in relationship to God and in trust. If you give occasionally, give consistently. Say, I'm going to give once a month or once a year. <laughs> Maybe it's that consistent. Every year, I'm going to give a dollar. Whatever it is, give consistently. If you're giving consistently, move to a percentage. This is where it gets painful because then you start at 1%. That might not be that painful, but by the time you get to where Jesus says we should be like 10%, then you're like, oh, that's a lot. I don't know, I, like I, I, felt, I felt like when I was going through this, when I was growing in my relationship with Jesus and, and this came on my radar, I was like, oh, 10%. I can't, I just can't survive. I won't live. Like I'll die if I don't have that extra 10%, which boggles my mind now because looking back at it, I was such a bad money manager. Jesus manages my 90% way better than I managed my 100%. And so Jesus says, hey, trust me with this. So start at 1% and move to 2%. If you're at 2%, move to 3% and move up that, that, cons- move up that percentage bar a- until you're giving the tithe. Uh, give a tithe, which is 10%. So move from, from a percentage to 10%. And then if you're there, don't pat yourself on the back and think, I've done it. Come, come with me, and together we can go into the extravagant generosity location where we are giving uh, out of, out of uh, our need. We're giving out of a sacrificial state where we are saying, God, I would love to be able to afford that brand new stereo system or whatever it is. Now, no, no, it's not stereo systems, but that's cool. Uh, whatever it is, a brand new car. But instead, I'm going to seek your kingdom instead. I'm going to seek to give to you instead. This is the, the growth that we need to experience in the kingdom. You notice that I'm not standing up here. There, there is never a time when you want to join the church or when we uh, are having conversations, there's never a time that I'm going to be like, hey, how much money do you make? Can you uh, fill this out and tell me and, and we'll fill this out? Because it's not between you and me. It's not even between you and the church. This is between you and God. It's a conversation that only you can have, and only God is capable to understand where you are and what you're going through and how you can get through it. And God says, I want you to trust me on this. Actually, this is the only place in all of Scripture that God says, test me on this. Test me on this because I will bless you abundantly beyond all that you give to me. And and it boggles my mind. And so for us, uh, because of this, I want us to have an opportunity. If you look inside your bulletin today, you will notice that there is a commitment card. One side looks like this. And the idea of the commitment card is to say, hey, I'm going to commit something to God. Now, 
The good news is this Sunday, you just take that sucker home with you. And I want you to pray and have a conversation with God. And we are going to bring that back on November 26th. And we're going to offer that, not to me, not to the church, but on the altar to God to say, hey, this is what I am committing to do. Now, I want you to hear this. This is not written in stone. And I am not going to call you if you fall behind. Nobody's going to call you and say, hey, you said you were going to give a dollar and you've only given 50 cents. Nobody's going to call you. The reason is because I have experienced life and I know that I had a job and I lost that job and I had filled out a commitment card and I called the church and I was like, guys, I'm not going to be able to do it because I, I need you know everything that I have and I don't have any income coming in. So I'm not able to give to the church. So that, it, it's a commitment between you and God, and God knows well before you do what's coming down the pipe for you. Now, here's what I want us to do. We have several boxes that are in here. My favorite on this, so we have a general fund. General fund allows us to do the mission and ministry. You, you select how much you're going to give there, or you're going to give to the building fund. Again, you want to know what keeps me up at night? We have a $1.3 million loan still from the bank. We pay $9,000 in interest every month. That bugs me to death. So if you want to help us with that, well, I would love that. Because <laughs> every thousand dollars that we give toward our principal reduces the total amount of, of interest that we have to pay on a monthly basis. And so we would love for you to help us with that. So that one's what, that's what that was for. If you want to give a one-time gift, you can select that. Now, here's the only one that I care about on this whole thing. You can fill all of those out between you and God, not between you and me. The bottom one says... I or we commit to taking a step in generosity this year. That's the one that matters the most out of all of this because that means I'm going to move in a direction toward Jesus. I'm going to, to believe that God is going to do something miraculous in there and I'm going to trust that, that this practice of tithing or this practice of generosity is a powerful discipline that we can grow in relationship to God through. And, and we're going to be able to be a part of this long heritage, continue to grow like the community around us needs us to be so that we can share this love and grace that God has given to us. God offers greater things. God says, you are going to do greater things. And I am going to give you my spirit so that you can do it. God has a purpose for us here at Cassidy. And we, we are the church of Jesus Christ. And the gates of hell cannot stand against us. So let us embrace the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Let's, uh, let's live like we believe in a risen Savior who has given life and salvation to us. And let's go into the world loving God and loving our neighbor, and sharing all that God has done for us. Let's be a blessing the way that God has called us to. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Holy One, we give you thanks for the gift you give us in Jesus Christ and the way you reveal yourself to us. Thank you for life and for salvation. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin and justification. Thank you for new life in Jesus Christ. Help us to embrace that life. Help us to, to faithfully follow you. Help us, Lord, help us to love you more than money, more than stuff, more than anything. Help us to fall head over heels in love with you and help us to be passionate about the building of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.